So in this problem, chapter 2, uh, problem 46, uh, we're told a stone is thrown vertically upward with a speed of 24.0 meters per second. And there are three parts to this problem. A, how fast is it moving when it is at a height of 13.0 meters? B is how much time is required to reach that height? And C, why are there two answers to part B? OK. So um, let's get a list going here of all the answers we're going to collect. First thing we should do with any physics problem, if it's appropriate, is to draw a picture. So the simplest picture you might draw is this. So let's just at least uh, draw an axis. This is the y direction. And down here will be um, 0. And there is the stone that's thrown from, we're supposed to assume it's thrown from the ground. So here it is, and it's on its way upward, traveling at some initial speed of um, 24.0 meters per second. Um, and uh, it's going to get to some height later on, which we might call uh, y. So in fact, this will be y0, and this will be some later height that we'll just label y. Okay. Um, all right, so in part A, we're supposed to figure out uh, what, how fast is it moving when it gets to a height of 13.0 meters. So having a picture is great. What we want to do is also list some concepts that we might need. Um, conceptually, we've got uh, one-dimensional motion with constant acceleration. So let's just write 1D uh, constant acceleration motion, right? That acceleration due to gravity. And we might as well list some equations that we might need. So we've got concepts, equations, and there are these three master equations that we use. We can write them down in terms of the x or y direction. They're all the same. So let's write them in terms of y. y is equal to y naught, the initial y position, plus the initial y velocity times time, plus 1 half the acceleration in the y direction time squared. The velocity obeys this equation. The later velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And then that third equation that we can get from combining the first two, the one that's quadratic in the velocities, delta y. OK, remember that this delta y is just the final y minus the initial y. OK, so we've got our concepts, equations. And I'm just going to go ahead and write down the things that we know, the known things that were given in the problem. Whether we're told it explicitly or not, we've got to realize that the initial y position is 0. It starts from the ground. The final y position, at least in this part of the problem, is 13.0 meters, the acceleration in the y direction. That's due to gravity. And because we've oriented our coordinate system going up, that means acceleration points down, that means it's negative. So it's minus g. g is that value 9.8. So let's just write this as minus 9.8. And of course, the units meters per second squared. All right. Um, now we're ready to uh, make some progress. Let's try to figure out how to do part a. Um, we're supposed to figure out what exactly uh, is the speed when the object gets to this height of 13.0 meters. There's nothing in the problem that uh, asks for the time, and we're not given the time. So looking at these three equations that were given, let's, we can label them 1, 2, and 3. Perhaps the most convenient equation to use is number 3, which doesn't have time explicitly in it. What we're looking to get is the velocity. So let's go ahead and try to use it. Um, we can write vy squared equal to the initial velocity of 24. Got to keep track. 24 meters per second squared. Of course, that should have been on my list of knowns. That's squared plus 2ay, 2 times a minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And the delta y, which is y final minus, minus y initial, which is 13.0 meters. OK, sorry about that. So you realize we, have, we know everything in this equation. We can go ahead and compute. Apparently, vy squared is about 321.2 meters per second. Both of those are squared. So we're almost there. We're ready to figure out what the final, what the uh, velocity is at that point. We need to take the square root of this number, which keeping in mind when you take the square root, you always have the possibility of plus or minus. So I should write plus or minus 
17.9 meters per second. Now we could be lazy and not really think about this and just assume it's the positive, but there's nothing to stop us from choosing the minus. So we have to ask the physics, the physical question, which one should we choose? So for the moment, let's just keep both of these options. Plus or minus 17.9 meters per second. And we'll figure out each sign will correspond to a different physical aspect of the problem. Okay, so part B. We're tasked with figuring out how much time it takes to get to that height. So we can look at these equations that we have, the kinematic equations, which one has time in it. Well, these top two, you can use the first one, but that's a quadratic equation in T, and I'd rather not solve the quadratic equation. So maybe we can get by using equation two. So let's try that two. The final velocity, which we're not sure, it's plus or minus 17.9 meters per second equal to the initial velocity of 24.0 meters per second plus the acceleration in the y direction, the minus 9.8 meters per second squared times the time. The time is what we want. We know everything else, so we're in good shape. You can subtract over the 24 and divide by minus 9.8, keeping in mind that you can solve this equation two ways, whether this is plus or minus. And so what you realize is you might get either t is equal to 0 0.62 seconds or t is equal to 4.3 seconds. So you have two, cho two choices. It turns out that we're going to use this first number, but actually technically both of these are, are, are valid. So let's write both. Okay. Finally, for part C, let's just notice that the reason why there are two choices here is because actually the stone will pass this point, uh, this height, twice. It's best to illustrate this by making a graph of y as a function of time. We know that the path has a parabolic shape. Even if it's going straight up in time, the path kind of looks like this. And at let's say this height of 13 meters, the stone will pass that height at 0 0.62 seconds on its way up, and then on its way down again, it'll pass that point at about 4.3 seconds. So you'll notice here, the slope of the y versus t graph is positive, so the velocity is positive here, that corresponds to the plus solution, and the slope of this graph is negative, corresponding to the minus solution. That's why there are two solutions, because there are actually two times when y is equal to 13.8 meters.